Sorry, I shouldn't whistle into there. Just making sure this live stream is working. Takes a moment to initialize on the web. And there we go, we are live. So this is Jeremy Bailey from the environmentguy.com and the day is, I think it's Wednesday, so it's Wednesday, August the 5th. That means we have five more days before this assignment is due. So this is part of an application process for a local studio. They give you an environment, or sorry, they give you a reference and they want you to make a 3D environment using it. So I, this is the fifth live stream I've done so far on this project. Uh, there wasn't a, wasn't a live stream yesterday, but, um, yeah, we're, it's getting close to where it needs to be. So I'm just going to review what I have so far, uh, since last live stream. Let's see, what have I done? Don't even, don't even remember for sure what, what I did since then what's different but uh, I made some furniture see I got this lovely chair right here nice uh, chair for inside our shop uh, I made this it's like a bar stool it's a nice uh, outdoor thing so it's a wire frame and I have a s it's like a double sided plane in the middle there and I was thinking we'd put a, a fine mesh texture on there Hold on a sec, I'm going to close the live preview there. Okay, so we have that. I made this table. Okay, why is there a pillar there? Eh, doesn't really matter. But uh, I made, made a nice table here and, and an umbrella that goes with that table. When I was making this table, uh, I was originally thinking it would be a table with like just a metal bar coming down. But it seemed a bit wasteful to me because I want to put these umbrellas through it. And I possibly may even want umbrellas just standing on their own. So it seemed wasteful to hide that uh, whole umbrella rod I inside the pipe of the table. So I bisected the, the middle support for the table so that it would reveal a, like a cross section of the umbrella part and I think it looks pretty cool you know, it's a interesting looking piece you can see it there amongst the grain but yeah um, I made these pieces here this is yesterday I actually made these pieces twice yesterday I lost my afternoon work and so I had to redo stuff at night but um I want to make the like a uh, an area for to put stuff on top of uh, these buildings you know I I think uh, because this is a game environment it's reasonable to expect it should be playable by a character and I think it would improve the dynamics for the character if if the player is able to get up to other areas and they're not just limited to the ground level so I need to make some stairs going up here and yeah I need to model so I still need to model things for this uh, interior restaurant that I'm making but um, yeah, we're getting really close to the end here um, because half the time has already elapsed actually a little bit more I believe it's time that I need to wrap everything up get get everything exported as FBX files and placed into the Unreal Engine and start doing the set dressing you know I've done you no know, I've done the best I can with the time I've had and I have got quite a bit done See if we go to this layer, select all the objects, there is 135 objects here. It actually doesn't look like that many, but 
there are quite a few things here and I mean if I haven't already displayed my abilities for this kind of model assets I don't think uh, continue to modeling more is going to help much in that regard so it's very important that I get all this wrapped up so starting today and I hope I get it done today if not I'll get it done tomorrow morning I do I have some arrangements of other things I'm going to be doing today but I need to get all this stuff exported out and you know, just double check all these models make sure the normals are right make sure that there's nothing weird with the geometry before it goes out and then perhaps tomorrow or the day after I'll start uh, playing in the Unreal Engine with this stuff so that'll be fun now today what I'm going to do is well I need to identify the key things I need I need to create in order to complete this so like I already have windows there's a couple decorative pieces that I need for the buildings but not a lot um, I already have furniture I have you know planters pillars the scaffolding which I should probably try to assemble a little bit better um, yeah I need some some uh, terrain yeah, some terrain to work with. I wanted to make some rock structures so I could have, uh, you know, some some ground areas that are higher, some are lower. You know, make an interesting space. This is supposed to be a city block, and you no, know, I'm gonna have to make other things, but we're getting close. So terrain needs to be done. A few uh, things for my interior space needs to be done. Uh, I need to make those lights. I still haven't done that. The lights are important. So that will be, if I look back at the reference, I've been saying this for a while now. I haven't done it, but I think I'm going to do it tonight. I think, I think I'll do it tonight. Oh, I confused supplied there open that up so this light post here or there I need to model that that would be a really nice thing definitely good for the street as well as so that would be the most complicated light I'm expecting to do I'm also going to do a few lights that um, just attached to the wall I need some lights that uh, go into the restaurant and I mentioned this on Monday that I'm also need like some string lights, some some like uh, wires that hang from the walls and have like little clear white light bulbs on there. So that's what needs to be done. It's not a whole lot. We're getting close to the end. I mean, I'm sure I'll find some random things here and there. Oh yeah, I need to do some signs, but signs are super easy. It's not going to be a difficult thing to accomplish. Um, yeah, maybe some antenna or something on the top. That'd be nice. But yeah, uh, that's that's where I'm currently at. Oh yeah, the tower. Maybe I want to make a tower, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. So today so what we should do we should identify a few things to model for that interior space that I'll do on this live stream and then when this live stream ends I'm going to start working on getting all these models exported and later tonight I will model that uh, lamp and then tomorrow we will we will work on finishing up any models if there's something that needs to be finished and hopefully start working in Unreal Engine. I don't know if I will show that on the live stream tomorrow or not but um, we're getting this done. That's it. That's the important part. We're getting it done and it's going to be great because 
when, once this is all modeled, like this isn't the only part I'm doing. I also have to take some images of this and I have to make, I have to make a package to, to uh, display this to the studio. So a package that like, that shows all the models are in there. It will display the set. It will display nice uh, composed images of the set. So like in the actual game. And yeah, so that's uh, get started. So I know on Monday I I was looking at more reference materials of things I wanted to do. And I'm not sure if it's if I save the image, I'm thinking of a particular image. Oh, there it is. I did save it. So, here's the interior of a restaurant. I'm going to use this as reference material for the restaurant that I am making. So, I already have chairs done. I have two kinds. I have like a bar stool kind of thing, and I also have a smaller chair like this. Uh, I need to make s some little tables for those chairs. Um, I need some decorative pieces, like I wanted wanted to do this uh, copper shelf here with uh, some of those pots. Um, I need to do a few dishes. I need a nice a fireplace would be a nice thing to add. Put in a fireplace. And yeah, there's like a little light there. I want to do that kind of light, just uh, a simple pointing down. I might do a chandelier, but um, I, I'm not going to do that in this uh, live stream. Um, I kind of like these windows here with the, those covers. I mean, those are purely decorative colors or covers, but uh, something like that will be very nice. So that's what we're aiming to do. So I'm going to put this over on my other monitor and turn on a little capture there. So that should allow you guys to see the reference up in the corner that I'm working on. So getting started, let's move to the layer that I have. have my little sample area that I've been putting together here. I'm going to grab the parts that are the interior of this space. Grab a few things that I need. And isolate them. Select those arches. There we go. So this this area here is what we're going to be working on. So I have this chair and I don't have a table yet to match up with it. So I think that's what I should work with first. Uh, this table is going to be pretty simple. From the reference material on the side, it looks like these are pretty basic wooden tables. So I'm not going to do anything really fancy with them. I just need to get things done and be efficient. Yeah. Actually, I think I want to grab Make sure I have that floor and a scale reference with me as well. There we go. It's always important to have your scale reference. So you're making things of correct size. So this table, let's see, those tables fit four chairs. So I'm going to move some chairs around like this. So we know what space we need. What's the proper height for a table? Let's compare it to my bar stool here. 
That's the height of the bar table. I think I think that I think that table height should be pretty close to what it needs to be. So in the next step, let's create let's duplicate that. Let's just scale it down and this will become a leg. So I want to snap this leg so it's uh, it's uh, touching the floor. There we go. And snap the bottom so it's touching the bottom of the table. And we can delete that face because it's not visible. There we go. So that's our leg height. And now that our scale is solved, we don't need to be seeing this other things in the scene. I'm just going to isolate those couple pieces that we need there. There we go. So that up first. Something like that. Okay. So that done. We need to create move these legs into position. So I'll just move one into the corner. And in our reference material, I believe how it works is, I believe it's cut on the bottom here. It's kind of like a slice. So I need to move these, make these so they're the right thickness first. Something like that. Then I'm going to rotate it by 45 degrees. Go into an orthographic view, view it from the side. And now I can use the bisect tool. And what this does is it basically lets me cut right, it, right through the object. So I'm going to cut the bottom there, like so. And I can delete the faces on the side that I want sliced off. And there we go. It's a little slice. Um, next thing, to angle this leg a little bit, I'm going to select that vertice, move my cursor, sorry, move my cursor to that vertice. And I'm going to scale from the 3D cursor. So if I select those vertices there, I can scale it in like so. And face that off. Kind of interesting. So, and for the leg, I think that's pretty much it not uh, a whole lot that needs to be done on this piece. Let's move it to the correct angle. There we go. So I can, maybe I want to bevel it. I don't want these edges to be really sharp, so I'm going to select select the edges that are pointing outwards. I don't need to bevel the inwards edge because that's not uh, very visible when the player is running through the game. So just select those three edges and control B and just like so. I think that looks fairly good. So with that done, uh, we need to check just to make sure there's no end guns. 
which n-gons is a face with more than four sides. Which I don't think, yeah, so we have one on the bottom here. You can just use the knife tool to create a new edge. And there, that, that's it for the leg. So with the leg done, we need to make the these support beams that are right di directly below the table itself. So to make those beams, I'm just going to, so there's two ways to make it. I could extrude it directly out of the table, or I could make it separate objects. I think I'm going to try extruding it. So I'm going to select the bottom face of our table here. And just do an extrusion. Set this back to bounding box center. Scale that in a little bit. Extrude it again. Scale it in a little bit. And then I can select this face loop around like so and extrude that down. And so now we have these support beams going below the table. Now the nice thing about doing that is we now have these little vertices at the corners here. So I can put my cursor to one of those, or to the vertice where my leg is at the corner here. Then select my leg and set the origin to the 3D cursor. So what this allows me to do is I can snap this leg to other places. So if I duplicate it here, I can snap it directly to that corner. I just need to rotate it at each corner. Hmm. That didn't quite work. Let's see. Why didn't that work? Okay, there we go. Should work now. So, shifty. Move it there. Rotate it by 90 degrees. Yeah. That is odd. Or maybe I'm maybe I snapped it to the wrong vertice. Oh, there we go. That's that's wrong. Sorry, I, I was snapping it to the wrong place. So there we go. Now we can just do that. Rotate it by another 90 degrees. Duplicate it again. Snap it into place. Rotate it by 90 degrees. Ta-da! That was a pretty quick table to make. Go back to perspective view. And let's see, what, uh, what modifications need to be made here? I kind of wonder if those chairs are a little bit too short. In fact, they might be. I feel like this is maybe just a little bit too short. Anyways, it, it's easy for me just to uh, move the seat part up a little bit. If I move the table up there. Yeah, I think I'm going to uh, move this stuff up a little bit. Compared to the bar table height. So I'm going to join all these objects I just made for this table. So it's all one object. Go back into edit mode. I will select all the vertices from the bottom of the table like so 
and I will snap that to back to floor level. So our table's just a bit higher. And for the chairs, I'll do a similar thing. I'll move the chair up just a little bit. Go into edit mode. Select the vertices just on the bottom of those legs. And snap them back down to ground level. I know, maybe maybe that is too high. I know. I'm 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 being fiddly now. So much so that's the table the table's fine I'm going to leave it maybe maybe my support beam just went down a little bit too much I don't want to crush the legs of my customers underneath the table so let's move it up I know the the tables No, I think it's that the table itself is too short. It's not the problem of the chairs. I think I just made the table too short. So I am going to bring the top of this table up. Like so. Yes, I believe that, that was the issue because the the backs of these chairs aren't very high. I think that's what's throwing me off. Okay, so we will just raise up these legs. There we go. I think that is good. Okay, so that's that, uh, that's the table for time being. Um, actually, there it might be it might be just a little bit too wide. I'll try making a little bit narrower. Turn off the snapping. Something like that. Yeah, there we go. So that's our table and chair combo. And let's see, each of those little chairs is 900 tries. Let's see here, it's 900 times 4 is 3,600, and that table is 140, so 3,740, I think that's uh, acceptable. So with that done, let's make uh, another piece that's in our reference material, 
I'm going to go with uh, dishes because we absolutely have to have dishes in here or it's not going to look like a restaurant or it's, it's going to look like a restaurant that's missing a lot of what makes up a restaurant. So in our reference material we have, looks pretty simple, there's like uh, napkins or some kind of uh, probably a fabric napkin with a fork and a knife on it. We have uh, candles that appear to be in a glass jar, and we have tall glass cups. So I think I'm going to start with the cups. Cups are really easy. I mean, it's basically just a cylinder. A cylinder um, for edges, probably eight. I think eight sides is enough for a cup. bottom down to the table. And those cups appear to be quite tall. No, oh, maybe maybe eight sides isn't quite enough. Let's see. I'm gonna add another cylinder just to see. See what it would be like if I had a few more sides. I do want to be uh, conscientious of how many tries I'm going to be putting into the scene using these cups. Because the cups are not a high priority model, as such they should not be filling up the scene with a lot of geometry. So that is... 44 tries, that's fine. I like the one with 12 sides more than the one with 8. So I'm going to go with this one. Um, I need to model the inside. So to do that, I'm going to take the top face. I'm just going to inset it like so. I'm going to extrude it down inwards. And I want to leave a fairly thick base. That gives its weight so the cup doesn't fall over. And I want to make sure that's not an end gone on the end there. Change it to a tri fan. Um, the inside of the cup, I can merge the edges together because I don't need to put so much geometry in there. Something like this. I do this all the time for game models. It's just merge together things that aren't visible from the exterior. And that is 88 tries. So I think that's good. It's pretty simple. I might want to scale the top just a little bit. So it's not a completely vertical cup. Scale it like, like that a little bit. So I think that's good. Um, next thing, let's do that uh, candle jar. So there's red things on there. It's not really visible too well in this reference material, but there are quite a few. You can see one on each table. It looks like it's kind of a round jar with a candle in it and it has some kind of lid something sitting on top of it unless that might just be an object sitting behind it but I can't really tell from that image so I'm going to add let's try a sphere I'm going to try a UV sphere for this Probably 12 segments around. By 15 rings. Yeah. 
That might even be too much. Let's add another UV sphere. Give it a little bit less geometry. And there we go. I think that one's our that one will be our winner. So we're going to use this. This will make the bottom part. It's kind of like that size. We can use this to create the top lid of our jar. So if we just select all the geometry on the top there, we can, sorry, if we select this edge loop, we can rip it from our model, like so, and raise that up, and we'll model that into the lid. This bottom part, we will select the face loop there and delete it, and delete that little bottom cap that's left over, and that becomes the base that'll sit on the table. Just like that, extrude it, merge it to the center. There we go. Move that back down. Just make sure it gets uh, snapped to the table height. There we go. I'll select that edge loop on top, extrude it up. For this lid, I think what I will do is I decided I didn't don't need this cap top part. Hmm. What if I do? Because that's kind of like a handle, so let's scale it in like that. So maybe we maybe we can save ourselves edge loop and use the one that's already there. So put one here, we can use that to scale it in. Give the lid a lip. Just come out a little bit like so. Extrude down. And we need uh, air to be able to get to our candle. to do that. Let's see, I'm going to solidify this first actually. So I'm going to take that lid, I'm going to extrude it, scale it in like so, extrude it again, move that up inside there. There we go. That becomes, so that's now a solid piece for this bottom, we can select all those faces, extrude them, and then scale them along their normal direction. So now that's a solid object. Actually, I don't know. Maybe I, sh I shouldn't complicate this too much. Because if the candle is burning, it probably take the lid off, so maybe I'll just put the lid sitting beside the object. 
like so. Yeah, that's good. And let's put a candle inside of there. Now the candle doesn't need many edges. I'll make this one to be eight sides. I will delete the bottom face from the cylinder because it won't be visible to the player. I could just stick it inside there. Good. a wick for this as well. Well, I don't know. I don't think it needs a wick actually. I think it, it would be sufficient just to use the normal map in this particular case. That's uh, that's it for that object. So moving along, Let's see what else is on those tables. I think those tables have uh, a pepper and salt grinder. So let's make one of those next. So this should be another really simple object. It's just going to be a cylinder with twelve edges. grinder is kind of a, a round shape so it's a handle to hold on to. Actually those pepper grinders look kind of short in the reference. They're shorter than that cup. So we'll move it down like so. They appear to be kind of stout. So let's add a loop right there. Add a loop where that Handle. Let's put the loop there. And a loop there. So to make the round curve, I'm going to. Actually, what I'll do. I need to make a few loops there. Probably three will be enough. Select that edge loop, turn on proportional editing. And then I can scale it inwards. Kind of like so. Very good. top of this it's going to be a little ball like a thumb screw so you can take the thing apart and put more pepper in it so for that I'm going to use a icosphere it's going to be really small For 
the bottom of this object. Maybe just put a small bevel there. Kind of a interesting looking item. Maybe I should take that down a little bit. So I think the top part here is supposed to be a little bit narrower than the bottom. But that just looks silly. Anyways, that's fine. I'm going to leave it as it is. So we have a cup, we have a candle thing, we have a pepper grinder. Um, the salt grinder is kind of the same object, but still a little bit different style. I believe the salt grinder appears to be the same height. So we'll snap that to be the same size. And the primary difference is that this one isn't, it's not rounded like the pepper grinder is. Add a few loop cuts like that. You can select the edge loop, extrude it. Yeah, looks a bit more like that. That to the center. That up. that done um, we need the fork the knife and the napkin so the napkin I, I'm gonna do that next the napkin is gonna be kind of interesting it's more of an organic shape as such it's going to be no it's gonna be a bit different so let's get the napkin lined up with the bottom of the table something about that size. So to do this, I'm going to primarily be using my knife tool. I'm going to try to make an organic shape on the top face here. Something like that. Now, things like um, all the folds and stuff on the edges, that would be normal map. So, I'm not going to worry about that too much. 
I do want this to be round. Right there. So maybe I'll dissolve that edge. Let's just apply the rotation in scale. And I can move that out a bit. So I can bevel it. Beveling will make it round, like so. That's fairly good. Corner kind of comes up. Um, on this side, just kind of a crease. So I'll make a couple cuts. And push that edge in a little bit. Maybe I'll give that edge here a bevel. Decently okay. Let's make a, a cut along that edge. Oops. Sorry. I will merge those together. Just do some cleanup on this object. It's the same deal. Let's use our knife tool to get everything either triangulated or quadrangulated. That's good. So that's one. I'm going to make another one. So I'll be very quickly. Actually, what I can do is just duplicate this one and add a different variation to it. So I can just push these vertices around. Like so. There we 
go. So a couple different napkins, so let's do the fork. So for the fork, I'm going to start with a plane. Fairly thin. that edge we're going to subdivide it see how many prongs is that it's one two three four five yep that's the proper amount that manipulator is getting in my way I'm gonna turn that off just temporarily. Uh, see where where can I turn that manipulator off? It's in the settings somewhere. Interface. There we go. Just turn that off so you can see. There we go. You can extrude the prongs out. to make a loop cut on each of them. To round it off a little bit more, I can use a bevel, like so. And to give it thickness, we just select everything and we can extrude it. So maybe I'll bevel that. Here we go. Okay, extrude it and scale it along the normal direction. Oh, sorry, there's one thing I didn't do. I need to get rid of that end gone there. Just cut that, cut all that up before moving along. I'm going to isolate this object. Other stuff here is getting in my way. Now we're ready to 
extrude and scale along the normals. There you go, fork. But the fork looks very unnatural at the moment. So to fix that, I'm going to select that loop there, turn on my proportional editing. Try to make something that doesn't look quite as odd. See the ends of these, the end of the fork should be smaller. Next, the, the prongs of a fork are never perfectly aligned with each other. If you've ever, if you've ever analyzed your forks before, you notice that there, there was a little bit bent off by a small amount. There we go. Uh, might want to add like a little decorative piece to it. Try something like that. Could taper it like so. Good enough for a fork. It's uh, 240 tries. It's more than a napkin. <laughs> Anyways, that's that's an all right looking fork. That shall do well. And so next is the knife. So the knife is simpler than the fork. Knife is basically just a long stick. Something about like that. And at the middle of it will be the handle. Scale it up and see if knife will make maybe what I'll do for here I'm going to delete those faces like so the bevel tool like that
and face it off. not uh, particularly fancy. onto there nicely. Something like that. So there you go. You have a table with the dishes and the chairs. So now the next thing that we want to do is just make sure I have a duplicate of these objects with my uh, with the other assets I've made so far just so that when I'm export this I have all the stuff that belongs to the scene. So just duplicate it move it over to the other furniture here get that chair in there it's fine and make sure this stuff is on the correct layer just move it to the first one good I'm going to turn on the show wireframe for these objects. Good. So with that done, let's uh, move on to the next thing which will be some of the decorations on the walls is what I'm going to do next.
As I've been working on this project, I found that uh, there's a number of scripts that I need to write. It's been a couple of months since I was last writing my Python scripts. There are a few things that would be real time savers to me. But okay, the walls. Uh, let's see. Well, for starters, we need to put walls into this area here. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that window. Come on. Snap. There we go. So, to get the walls, see, I'm going to turn on back face calling just so I can see which side is the correct side. And snap the wall there. There we go. I have a wall. I can turn the back face calling off. So let's just quickly fill in the space with some wall. Like so. Actually this wall might need to be one unit longer. Oh, no, I'm not going to worry about that. But uh, So in our reference material, we have kind of a wall that just extrudes out and has a fireplace. So I want to make that piece. So I'm going to just select one of these wall pieces. I'm going to extrude it forward a little bit. Like so. And I am going to add a cube to the scene. So that's do that. There we go. And I am going to snap it to the correct proportions. Just like that. Good. Next, I need say just a scale reference here. Make sure the height of this is correct. I'm just going to grab that table, move it there. And that height, I think, is the correct height. That's good. Let's duplicate that object. So let's make the um, top piece that goes over the fireplace. Goes on like that. that other piece over like so. It's a bit too thick. Move it up a little bit. And it looks like the edge of this is routed on the reference. So I'll make something what, what can I do about that? Actually, what I'll do is I will inset this face up here. Like so. That's good. I will get rid of that. Don't need it. Snap those vertices back here. Do a, a loop cut like so. And then select this edge and bevel it.
actually. What I'll do is I'll I'm gonna move that edge in kind of like that. So clean this up a little bit. Good. That looks nice. I might want to add a slight bevel to the top here just so it's not such a sharp angle. Something like that is fine. So that's good for the top. Um, it's hard to tell from this reference, but I do believe this uh, front edge is curved. It looks like it curves in twice. So to accomplish that, I'm going to add a loop cut right in the middle. I'm going to add another loop cut uh, there. In there and then I'm going to delete the top and bottom faces temporarily I can select that loop that loop move it back a little bit like so and then use the bevel to create the round piece that I like Something like that. And for the edges, I think I'm going to round them off as well. Just select those. Add a few cuts like that. And as you can see, we now have a nicely shaped curved piece of whatever. <laughs> piece of whatever. But um, we can just start facing the top and bottom off again. I have to say bevel tool has to be one of my most favorite tools for modeling. There is so much you can do with it. It's good for just about everything except uh, doing bevels. <laughs> you know, it's anyone who's uh, used Maya will know what I mean by that. Hmm. Did I model that differently than I modeled that side? I think I did. this part I'm going to extrude that to the back like so and face it off here there we go 
that is the top of our object. See, it's looking fine in this render. Let's make sure we have done the same to the bottom. Maybe to uh, like so. Face that off. So with that piece done, let's make uh, a piece that goes under it. Just snap that onto there. You can delete that face because it won't be visible. Move that down. I, I want to bring the uh, manipulator back that we turned off a while ago. There, that manipulator. And um, bring that face up to the bottom of that shelf and delete the face. It's no longer visible. Let's bring that in a little bit. And we need to make a arch. So for that arch, I'm simply going to make some loop cuts there. Make one more loop cut. Bring that right up. higher I think that looks fine going to face this off now. So to face this off, I think what I'll do is straight that up there. I'm just going to start, I'm going to start by making a end gone, just like that. Do the same thing on this side. Now I can use the knife to draw in the edges. I think I should have put more um, polys there. Dang. It's kind of annoying. And I'm out of undoes. 
Oh, okay, let's try this one more. It always goes faster the second time you do it, so. Just a quick bevel it to find the right height. Just a little bit lower. Yeah, that's that's a better resolution. Actually, you know what? I forgot something. I didn't put uh, that in. Okay, once more. Do it quickly. better. Straight that up. And gone. And gone. Cut it. Doesn't take long at all. Good. Next, I'm going to try, try adding a bubble. I kind of like that. It's kind of nice. It's not exactly what the reference has, but I know I like that. I'm gonna go with it. So what I'm going to do just like from there to there, and space it out. From there to there, space it out. So those edges are a little bit um, too close together now. I'll just dissolve them and move the cut to there. There, that's quite nice. I like it. Okay, good. So, now that we have that, um, we need to make a change to the to this wall because we want an area inside of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a loop cut and I'm going to snap it right up there because we still want this um, parts on the edges here. So with that done, I can now add some vertical loop cuts, snap them there, make another one, snap it there, do something like that. Um, just merge those save us a few polys that way and now we can delete that inside face like so we can delete that face hmm, it says back face we don't need those back faces um yeah delete these faces on the back those are unnecessary um we can merge those that'll save us a try so that's unnecessary 
There we go. That's good. Now for here, we will take that stuff and extrude it back like that. So it gives us an inside area to our pit. Also, I'm seeing here that we have unnecessary edges. So I'm going to dissolve those edges and then merge those together like so. See, we don't need that face on the bottom either. Delete those. Oh wait, if we delete those, I, I didn't need any of those edges. Okay, there we go. We got those taken care of. Um, I, don't, I don't really like that edge there either. Let's dissolve those. I'll just cut it up to there. That is good. Taken care of. So the insides, um, let's make that the back area. So I'm going to face that. I'm going to add a loop cut. And I want that area to be a bit round. I think something like that. It's actually not, I don't think that's quite enough. Hmm, does it need to be around? We could even leave it uh, to be sharp. Actually, maybe what we'll do, we'll move that back to the appropriate amount. I think it's fine there. We'll add a loop cut there, a loop cut here. We will move these loops forward a little bit and bevel it like so. Merge those together. I'm going to Try something. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Eh, that didn't really work. Uh, maybe if we do it like this. From there to there. So what uh, options does this give me? Segments. Uh, that's that's close. I don't know. It's kind of a mess. Um, obviously it doesn't work well if you don't have an equal number of edges on both sides. Maybe I can merge some of these edges together. I don't really need so many polys in the back here. Center, center. How's that? Because the only way you're going to see inside to the back there is if you're from a distance, which is okay. If you're up close, you're going to be seeing it from this upwards angle, so you're going to see more of this down area but not up top there so I can afford to lose some polys but that is all right center so if we do that that should make this a little bit cleaner now we, whoa that isn't clean at all so what's the deal with that Okay, there it goes. Now it's working. And as you can see, it gives us, uh, when you loft it, it gives us that curve. 
right, so I would say that is all right. Let's try this with the other side as well. Very nice. One, two, three, four. So we need four subdivisions on that edge. And we can fill that edge in just like so. And we will bridge edge loops. Bridge it again. And that's fairly decent. I will need to clean it a small amount. Like to clean it, I can do, let's see what smoothing does. What does smoothing do? Does it look smoother? Okay, um, this stuff, obviously that corner is completely unacceptable. still don't like that. So what can I do about that? I really do not like that. I think I just need to you know knock I'll merge that up. And I can merge these together like that. And then that can merge together. And then see, we have a triangle there. I don't want a triangle there. At least not like that. I'm going to delete those faces. face it off like that. I'm not entirely happy. I don't know, it works. Maybe what I should do, I, th I think maybe I just still have too many faces. I really don't need a lot. The That edge there is important because that's going to be quite visible for silhouette purposes. But maybe I should be better just to merge these together. that there we go maybe I'll just select those edges dissolve them like so to keep that clean.
There we go. I think that's good. We maintained a nice silhouette. Um, the normal map will make that back piece look all nice, even if it looks a little bit... Uh, I know, it's fine. It's good. I'm not going to worry about it too much. So next, let's add a small amount of decoration to these edges here. Actually, I probably should have thought about that earlier. I'm just thinking about it now, because all these triangles are going to get in the way of what I want to do with that edge. I can just dissolve them for now. Um, let's select these. Bevel it like so. Do individual origins. Let's extrude it. Let's see. Doesn't seem to want to use the normal direction. Usually if you double tap an axis in Blender, it will it will move the object along its normal direction instead of the global direction. It doesn't seem to want to do that. I know I'm I'm not very happy with this. Let's bring those back. Maybe I won't do any or actually what I'll do instead is I will add a loop cut here and here. I will move those forward and then I can select this face move that back to the bounding box and scale that out like that just a, another way to bevel it and I don't know maybe I'll leave it like that is okay. I think I may also just adjust this. Uh, the reason why I'm snapping these as well is so that we make as efficient use of texture space as possible. We don't want any uh, anything hidden that's going to be using up texture space. Delete those. That is good. Next, let's add a base for this. And so right now it's right at floor level. Our base needs to be raised a little bit because when we have our floor tiles in our scene, it's going to intersect with the floor here if it's not raised. So I'm going to start just with a plane plane to that level. Move it there. Make sure that gets right to the back. Move it like so. Maybe I'll move that forward a little bit. Add a couple loops. That's uh, too far forward. Add some loops like that. Add another couple loops. it up. Just delete these faces for a moment. Make 
Actually, I probably didn't even have to delete those faces, but oh well. Got a round thing in the front there. Um, this the reasonable height something like that's probably okay with this bottom faces we don't need those bottom pieces so the next thing to do Faces either because they're not visible. Something like that. something that would be interesting to do here would be to select that edge Let's see I'm not sure if this is going to work or not Select that loop. There we go. Okay, it's going to work. Just bring in a little bit like that. Isn't not finding that out. Oh, that's what's going on. I made those both the same object. There we go. Uh, see if it's 
there's one more thing I need to change. Separate that. There we go. That's what I wanted. Apply. I think that's a, a better choice. Maybe I will also make it so it's not entirely a circle. Something like that. that. I'm going to delete the faces along there. I'm going to maybe I'll delete those. And then I'm going to take this. This will become the pit. That's what I'm thinking. Let's see, we have some unnecessary geometry back here. Maybe. I think I need to raise the bottom of this object just to match the floor height I have set here. Like that. There, that's better. Now it matches up. I can get rid of some of this excess on the back here. Like that. I should move these things back so I'm not wasting wasting it like so oh, that includes you good I will move these back to around there needs to move back. Actually, these need to go back further. These need to go all the way back to there. Okay, that's good. work a bit on that later. Um, I'm going to join these objects together now. That's all one. Get rid of those faces. Let's do a cut like this. 
there. Oh, doesn't want to give me that cut. Um, what can I do? Maybe I need to recalculate normals. I can delete the only faces. Build the faces this way. Excellent. Okay, so now that that is done, oh, there's still. Why is it quitting there? I think there's just too many edges coming off. If I select that, or actually, we have an end gone right here. I should clean these up. I move along. Okay, appears to be good. Right now, okay. There now it's selecting the entire edge loop, which is what I wanted. Actually, let's see where where does the floor go to? The floor goes to that point there. Only gives me the back most. I, I almost forgot about that. I, I have to remember that there's going to be the floor underneath of this. And I was going to, maybe what I, maybe what I have to do is include part of the floor with this object, which might be okay. So like if we have the fire pit, that's here, and. Like in this uh, picture here, we have a wooden floor. Well, obviously, there's not going to be a fire right beside the wooden floor. There has to be some kind of buffer zone around it. So maybe that's what I'll have to do. So I want to bring that down. And I want to make that like um, spherical. See, what can I do about making that spherical? Try something. What happens if I use proportional editing here? Yeah, that works. Actually, that works better than I thought it would work. So that gives us a pit. I 
I think it might be a little bit too deep though. I'll move it up a bit. Yeah, like that. Hmm, I like that. That's uh I think this is working out pretty well. So if this is a fire, this could either be a gas fire or a wood fire. Which one should it be? I'm going to make it a gas fire because that's a more of a modern thing. And from the reference material that we received from the studio, if you look on here, you can clearly see that this is a modern time Italy. You know, we have we have vehicles, people with blue jeans. <laughs> There's a guy wearing a tie and, a, and a dress pants. So this is modern Italy. So I think uh, a gas fireplace would suit this place well. So let's make, maybe I should use a curve for this. Yeah, I'm gonna use a curve. Add a curve, easier, like so, and set that to full and give it a bevel depth. So I want to make some metal bars that would like, if this were wood, it would hold those woods. So you notice a lot of a lot of gas powered fireplaces they have like fake wood in it. Artificial. Maybe I'll bring up a picture just to show you. The artificial logs that they put into these things. Yeah, like this stuff. It looks like real wood, but it's all it's like styrofoam or I know something similar to styrofoam it's very light and it's it can withstand the heat of propane or yeah I think it's propane that it burns but yeah that that's the kind of stuff I'm thinking about so I just need to put a holder for that in here which will be made of iron bars those duplicates are sorry are sharing object or the shape data so when I edit one they all get edited Actually, it's almost nice just as it is so, um, let's add another curve so why is this curve not rotating there we go around there and I'm going to use this for tapering so I'm just going to select my curve there and add that as my taper object
Why did that not work? Um, I don't know why it's not working. Oh, there we go. Just needed to apply the rotation and scale. Okay, that's looking kind of bizarre as it is right now. Maybe these need to have their... I think these need to be um, rotation scale applied as well. I don't know, that doesn't seem to be working properly. Oh well. Oh, well, it's not a big deal. I'll just move along without it. It's okay. the resolution of that a bit. Subdivide that. Give it some a space more like that. I know, I'm not satisfied. I think I need to myself a jig mm, I don't know it's probably fine like that I think so it's pretty nice I think I think that's fine. So so I'm going to accept that as my final answer. And I'm going to set the origin to geometry. And just snap that right in the middle. And then I can make another couple snap it there. Snap that there. I will create a cube. And I will use this cube to connect them together. Something like that. I will add some loop cuts. Just like so.
cube. So I think when I'm done here, I'm going to end the live stream and continue working it for, for a while. And as I said, I do have something else that I'll be doing today, but um, definitely tonight I'm working on getting all this stuff into the Unreal Engine, or at least uh, prepared, exporting it to the FBX format. I think I'm just about done here. Because, yeah, we need. We're getting really close. We want to move right ahead with uh, getting everything into the Unreal Engine and preparing this for, you know, th the final steps, basically. That's what, what we're trying to get into. Getting this done, because everything has to be done by the 10th at the latest. So. I hope to get it done, I mean ideally it would be done on Friday and then on the weekend I can just overview things, uh, prepare a presentation for this, um, do any fixes if I find things that do have problems, which I certainly hope I won't need to do that. but. I have to say, I, I think uh, quite a bit got done. For a project I started, you know, Wednesday last week, I've made over a hundred, over a hundred models for this scene so far. I would say it's going along pretty well. significant I need to do there. I don't think so, so I'm going to go ahead do that copper shelf with uh, the pots on it and I also want to do like that mirror for you know, some picture frames and stuff. But um, for now uh, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, uh, there's still a lot of things I can do with this. Actually, there's a little ornamental piece on top. I think I I may model that as well, because I, cause I believe that would add to the scene a fair bit. But um, yeah. like in this space at the moment. Oh, I, I'm really looking forward to this. This interior space is really the last major thing that's remaining. And we'll get putting this stuff together to make a really cool environment. So. I will see you tomorrow on live stream. Well, I won't see you, but you'll see this video. <laughs> so have a good day and have a good time.